In this video, we're going to take a look at model manipulation inside of Autodesk Inventor so we have a better understanding of how to interface with our three-dimensional model, how we can really start to investigate what it looks like and how to get around inside of this environment. Let's begin by looking on the right-hand side of our screen at a couple interface elements. Here we have the view cube, which is this box sort of shape up here, and we also have the navigation bar. Let's begin by discussing this view cube. As I click on different parts of this cube, it will rotate to different orientations for me automatically. You can click on the edges of the cube, you can click on the corners of the cube, as well as the faces of the cube. When you are looking at a cube face straight on, like we are here, you can use the rotate left and rotate right arrows as well. If you would like to change your orientation for an isometric view, such as what you see here, you can have this be a saved view that it always remembers. If I go up here to my cube again and click on the home icon, this takes me back to a saved orientation. Well, I like that previous orientation better. One thing you can do is a zoom previous to get back there quickly. That's actually an F5 key. Or if you right click, you can see the previous view in your marking menu, expanded menu here. And I'd like to save that view right there as my new home view. For any time I click home, I wanna see that. I'll simply go up here to the cube, and right click on the home icon and set current view as home to either a fixed distance if I was zoomed in or zoomed out or to a fit to view which fits the entire geometry to my screen. So I'll choose that option. Now, any which way I adjust my model, if I click on the home icon, it'll take me back to my new saved isometric view. Now we can rotate a lot of different ways. We can rotate with that cube like we just saw. We can also hold down the F4 key on our keyboard, and this will bring up a little screen that kind of looks like a scope on a gun. And essentially here, we can click inside of this and do rotations to rotate the model as a free rotate. If we click and hold on either one of these hash lines around there, it will actually do a constrained orbit to only go up and down or to only go left and right. So even if I move my cursor up and down, it still only turns to the left and to the right. We can also hold down the shift key in our middle mouse button and do a rotation as well. I actually utilize a device called a 3D connection mouse, which is known to a lot of people as a 3D mouse. It looks like a little hockey puck, but basically what it allows me to do is rotate with my left hand free from the keyboard. So you might see me do a lot of this during the course. It's because I'm using this particular device. They're pretty inexpensive. If you use CAD software for eight hours a day, I definitely recommend one. You can usually find them under $100. Next up, we'll take a look at zooming in and zooming out. This is done with our scroll wheel on our mouse. If we scroll up, it'll actually move the model away. If we scroll down, it'll bring the model towards us. And it does that based on the location of where our cursor is. If I move the cursor towards the bottom of the screen and scroll up, you can see it's different than if I have my cursor at the top of the screen and scroll up and scroll down. Now, in order to get this back to seeing the entire geometry in the screen, I could click the home button to go back to that nice isometric view, or it's actually an easier way with your mouse. If you double click the center mouse button, it'll actually do a zoom extents for you. So it actually will fit the geometry to your screen. If you want to get back to the nice isometric, you can click the home button here, or you could actually choose the home F6 function key to do that as well. Now, the next thing we'll take a look at is the navigation bar that's on the right hand side. This, as it is out of the box, is not set up very well for most users. A lot of people will come over here and customize this because it doesn't really give you the tool set that you would wanna have there. For instance, we'll take a look at this first one here called the steering wheel. When I click on that, it brings this little wheel on screen for me. And I like to call this guy the little lost puppy because he will follow your cursor wherever you go. The only benefit to this sort of steering wheel tool is that if you're using a laptop and you have forgotten your mouse, you basically have all your zooming tools available to you based on your touchpad. So it's a little bit easier in that sense. In order to turn it off, you basically have to click this little X button. But if you are using a laptop and you forget your mouse, may give this guy a try. I rarely forget my mouse, so this is something I don't use a whole lot. Our next command is the pan command. Now this one looks like a little hand, and if you start it, it allows you to pan your screen around. However, you can do it without that. If you hold down your center mouse button, you can actually pan your model to move it left and right up and down without zooming in or out. 
The next one is our zoom all, zoom window, zoom selected, basically different zooming tools. We can actually zoom in and out with our scroll wheel and we can do a zoom extends by double clicking it. So the only extra benefit we have here is perhaps the zoom window. By choosing that, I can draw a small rectangle and it zooms into that particular space. Again, if I double click that center mouse wheel, it will do the zoom extents. The next command we have is the orbit tool, which we can do with the F4 key, we already mentioned that, or you can actually start the command there so you don't have to hold down the F4 key. Here, I'll click on my home button, go back to my standard view. Next, we have a look at tool. The look at tool allows you to look flat on a face that you select on. So you cannot select this curvature on the outside. It has to be a nice flat face. Here, I'll go ahead and select on this face here, and it turns it nice and parallel to the screen so I can see better directly onto that face. I'm going to hit F5 to go back to my previous view. Here, I'll choose the look at command again. This time, I'll choose this face right here. Again, it turns it nice and flat, although it's obscured by the geometry of the model. Here, I'll hit F6 to go back to my home view. Now, as I said, a lot of what you have over here, you may not utilize because your mouse does a lot of it, or there might be commands you just plain don't need at all. So if I were to choose this down arrow here, the very bottom of the navigation bar, I can actually turn commands on and off. I don't use pan, so I'm gonna turn that off. I don't use a steering wheel, I'm gonna turn that one off. And I don't really even use the zoom command. So that only leaves me with my orbit and my look at tool. I can add a few more. Let's add projection perhaps visual styles. So now I can actually utilize my visual styles that I would normally have to go to my view tab to get. So let's talk about that. I basically added this tool here. So if I want to change visual styles, I wouldn't have to go all the way up to my view tab, then click on visual style and then choose it from a pull down list. Instead, I can remain on my 3D model tab and continue to just change visual styles from my navigation bar. The one above that, the projection method, you can go orthographic or perspective. This is a way you can adjust. So if you're trying to get a better eye appealing sort of view, maybe put into a catalog or in a PowerPoint presentation or for some other marketing collateral, you could change to a perspective view before you take your screenshot or try to export this model as an image. Here I'll go back to orthographic because that's the way I normally work.